Hello everyone, welcome to this follow-up for Cobra and Phases Group play Voltage in the Milky Night, the sixth studio album from Stereo Lab. Yeah, so uh, we are finished with Stereo Lab for now. Uh, I do want to listen to more or even the rest of their discography in the future, but I usually limit myself to like three to seven album, or uh, I should say like four to seven albums. Kind of depends on the artist. Um, per like artist binge that I do, um, just because I think I did like 12 Bowie albums. I got burnt out, uh, towards the end. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do like sections of artists. If that's the case, if they have a lot of albums, that's the case for stereo lab. So we stopped here at Cobra and phases group. Um, this is probably, I, I think I've kind of worked this out in my head. I think this is my third favorite. Um, I would probably rank them transient is first, just because I kind of lean more towards, uh, like when they do rock stuff, I tend to like that more often than not than their lounge stuff, even though I would probably say I like the lounge genre more than the post rock genre. It's kind of weird. Uh, stereo lab is a very specific, unique creature, uh, in this case. Um, but transient, I think just edges it out. Because I think I like the tracks on Transient just a little bit more. It's a little more consistent for me, a little more varied. Uh, variety is kind of the key thing with uh, my Stereo Lab criticisms. Uh, then just below that, Stots and Loops. Uh, then this would be third. Uh, just below this, very closely, would be Emperor Tomato Ketchup. Uh, and then below that would be Mars on Diet Quintet. And then Pang is last. Uh, I think that's all of them, right? Um, this was probably their best mesh of the rock and pop genres um a lot of stuff here that worked way better than it had any right to i think um i've said before i don't remember which video it was that uh stereo lab music kind of falls through a crack for me where there's like the spectrum of you know on this side the more uh intense music or just music you have to kind of pay attention to because there's a lot of detail and then the more like vibe out music, like ambient music, you know, it's hard to just sit there and pay attention to ambient music without getting bored. Um, but there's like, I think everyone has this, but I have like this kind of crack in the middle of both things where like something is either too chill or like a weird, like uncanny mix of chill and, you know, detailed and intense. Um, and Stereo Lab is one of the bands that I've listened to that hits that that middle weird spot the most. Um, but when it's, you know, on either side, I, I, I dig it, you know, fairly well. But I think that this album was their best uh, effort so far from what I've heard at mixing those two things together and kind of closing that gap a little bit more. So track by track fuses, a uh, cool kind of little jazz opening with an interesting vibraphone riff that just kind of, it's a groove that sort of keeps the song going. Um, I don't know if I'd necessarily say it's a good indicator for the rest of the album. Uh, Cause I mean, we do have a lot of vibraphone and some uh, marimba on here and brass as well, but the fuses is like a very specific kind of opening. Uh, much like uh, Brackage on Dots and Loops, it kind of, um, it's like, I, it doesn't quite set the stage for the album as much as like it sets the bar really high and then everything else kind of plays underneath it, I guess is a way to put it. Uh, people do it all the time, kind of the chill pop rock song uh, with nice brass additions and a really cool synth outro as well. Uh, the free design, it's got that interesting Vince Guaraldi-esque piano riff. Do, 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 do. Uh, not bad. Um, number four, blips, drips, and strips. Uh, this little quirky, squeaky synth kind of sophista pop song. It's not quite my favorite. Um, I don't necessarily love when they lean to that like art, sophista pop, euro pop angle. Sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, it just it it really depends uh, track to track. Um, Italian shoes continuum. This dreamy, spacey kind of euro pop twinge track. Last half is this odd synthy riffy jazz thing i like the first half more the italian shoes parks i think it's italian shoes and then continuum is like the second half uh track number six infinity girl another kind of euro pop track sparse bouncy as more vibraphone and bass brass uh not a favorite but it is a really solid connective track um track number seven the spiracles uh, nice vibraphone over the harpsichord uh, kind of just chords. It's a really has a nice charming tone to it. That's one of my favorites off of here. Uh, op hop 
detonation. Uh, same old stereo lab riff. You've heard you've heard it in tracks like Percolator, Spark Plug, and Miss Modular. It just kind of feels a bit recycled. I kind of commented on that. I think in the video, the reaction. Um, it's not even necessarily the same chord so much as the same rhythm of the chords. You know, doom 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 doom. It's like it just it feels a little recycled. Um, it's not a terrible track, but it uh, it just kind of you know, like I said, sort of fell through the cracks for me. Uh, track number nine, Puncture in the Radak Permutation. Um, this has a cool marimba riff and string outro. Um, I think I like it a little bit less on... I don't, don't remember if I loved it on first listen or liked it on first listen, but I kind of like it a little bit less. Um, it's not terrible, though. Uh, track number 10, Velvet Water. Uh, sort of subdued, um, but it kind of works as a connective track. Uh, track 11, Blue Milk, their long track of the album. I still prefer a longer track like Jenny Ondioline, um, but this one feels a bit more cohesive than some other longer tracks. It doesn't necessarily feel like random disparate ideas stitched together. It kind of uh, it goes through its own uh, progression. It feels like a one track kind of a thing. Kaleidoscopic Gaze. Uh, it's a nice addition of the singing saw in a fairly simple song. Uh, last half is kind of an odd electronic number. I prefer the first half. Um, not a favorite, but it's solid. Uh, strobo Acceleration. Um, nice chords and melody in the chorus. It works as a really solid connected track to the end of the album. Uh, Emergency Kisses. First and last part, a uh, really cool, kind of mysterious tone. Middle part just feels, again, kind of like bland, stereo lab, recycled material. Uh, but the first and last parts are, you know, I, I really like. I like when Stereo Lab, like, toys with those kind of, like, darker tones. Like, um, was it three, three whiles later? What was it called? Longer? Off of uh, Mars, I think it was. And then the the monstrous sacre or whatever off of Emperor Tomato Ketchup, if I'm not mistaken. I, I like those kind of like moody, glo not gloomy, like noirish kind of uh, tones from them. I wish they kind of did that more. Uh, and then come and play in the Milky Night. Um, it's... <sighs> Stereo Lab does like really solid outros. Actually, so like on every album, some of my favorite songs are usually the outro. Uh, Contra Natra, I think, is my favorite so far. Uh, but Come and Play in the Milky Night uh, has this cool momentum to it, uh, kind of aided by uh, like a bouncy bass and some really cool chords to it. Um, so yeah, that's that's Cobra and Phases. It's not a favorite. It has a couple pitfalls for me. Um, but like I said, it meshes those two genres that they play in most better than some other albums do. Uh, better than Mars does, better than Emperor Tomato Ketchup does. Um, so yeah. That's it. That's my Stereo Lab binge for now. I will resume it sometime in the future, but uh, in the meantime, I've got other stuff to get to. So that is all. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you around. Godspeed.